How's it going, everybody? As you can tell, there's a bit different here in the garage. There's no more table. A few slides on the sawhorse and the stand. And if you look over here, there's no more big lathe. I got rid of that because I was running low on room and I wasn't using it very often. It wasn't worth how much room it took up. So I removed it, downsized the table to 4 by 8 So I got that in here now. Benches over here now with the brake and the shear and everything on it. And everything else is pretty much the same. But I'm working on the uh, top square up here now where the wing bolts on. So I got two uh, one inch tubes cut. And this one's in place. And this one here now I'm getting fit up. Uh, this block here was a little bit in. So I've just been following away at it to get it perfect. And right now it is perfect. I don't know if I'm going to show you this with one hand, but I'm going to try. It's supposed to be one inch or 31 inches center to center. And as you can see, it's right on. And this black here ended up a little too far out. So I got to make up my mind now whether I'm going to shim it or. I'm probably just going to unscrew it and move it over a bit and then same thing, I'll follow that one to fit. This, is, this square here got to be pretty perfect. Uh, it's where the wing bolts on, so I mean, if you're off a quarter of an inch here, by the time you get 17 feet out at the other end of the wing on the wing tip, it's no trouble to be a half inch, inch, something like that off just from being off a little tiny bit here you do have a little way when you put your wing attach fittings on which is right here yeah that's one of them there you bend up but it's good to have this here as perfect as possible so that's what i've been doing so that one's good i'll measure that one now shouldn't be any more off because this going in where you got a pivot point there that will technically bring this end this way a little bit but i mean i moved this a 32nd of an inch so it ain't gonna move very far up here so i'll get that done and i'll be back all right there we go and i'm moving this block in a little tiny bit did a bunch of falling on it as you can see and I locked in place with another block. So it should be uh, good now. They're both up flush with the table. So that one's right on 31. And right on 31. And I'm measuring outside to inside. That gives you the same as uh, center. So that's that. Now we gotta add the uh, US3 and US2, which are a three quarter, oh, 35 wall tubing. I already coped one end. And uh, get this on center line, I got some one eight shims here. Because three quarter tubing is quarter inch less than one inch. You divide that by two and uh, you know, one eight. So as you can see, that end is good. This end is way too long because I went by the cut length on the chart. I don't know why, because I already know by now that the cut lengths are way too long for what they gotta go. It just gives you more work. But uh, yeah. Get that fit now and get it put in there. And uh, we should be good to go. So, I'll do that and I'll be back. I also forgot to mention, don't forget to uh, check your tubes diagonally. So you can have it same distance on end to end and end up having one in more than the other, say. I got them both set flush here, so it should be pretty good. And it is pretty good because I already checked it. But looking in there. 
And we got 41 and a half. It's gonna be hard to get it hooked in here using one hand, but I'll try. Chaining, 41 and a half. So, that way you know everything is square. So make sure you do that before you go welding stuff together or even getting some close fits done on stuff. Because that'll throw you off. Well, here we go. All cut, fit it up, cleaned. The only thing I gotta do now is set the uh, actual spacing of these two. They're still free to go wherever they want. So that's pretty easy. It's supposed to be 27 and a half. It's measurement right there, that's center to center on the tubes. That's all. Set them to 27 and a half, center them up in the tubes, and tack them in place, and then it's gonna be uh, time to start cutting. Diagonal here, that's USL5. I'm not sure why these plans don't have the second tube to make this an X instead of just a cross brace. Because that is a fairly common modification. Yeah. These plans are copyrighted in 82, but I'm pretty sure the revision has been long before then, or long since then, I should say, not before. So, I believe it was Atley Dodge that started doing this X brace a lot. I don't know if he's the one who originally came up with it or not, but he's the one who, as far as I know, pushed it a lot back in the day. And to my knowledge, I believe he even offered the STC for that, for the PA 18s and 12s, and probably this 14 and maybe some others for free, because he thought it was that much of a safety improvement. Uh, for those that don't know already, what happens is, if you end up in a crash and things up top buckle, this tube right here is right above your head. And it usually buckles in the middle, V's, and goes down. So it basically creates a spike. And like I said, you're right below it. So it can cause uh, some injuries to the pilot. And X bracing it solves that. It doesn't fail in that mode or doesn't do it as bad, or I'm not quite sure, but it is a big safety improvement. Pretty well every fuselage you'll see nowadays that's been rebuilt has that added, and to my knowledge, every new fuselage, whether it's Univair or whatever, all got the x brace put in for that reason. So I'm gonna be adding it in, and I advise anyone who's building one to add it in as well. So, We'll get this here set up, tacked in place, and then I'll start making the uh, X brace. Well, today is tomorrow. It's a new day out. Back at this again, I got the uh, diagonal tube fit and put in place. It's not tacked or nothing yet, but it's in there. A little bit loose, but it's not bad. According to the plans, you're allowed 16th per edge or per end. I got about that in total so it's only a 30 second per end but it's not bad and uh if you're wondering how you get it in here because well as you can see it's captive basically the same as this on the bottom that's why you do a decent weld but don't weld it fully if you weld it fully you won't be able to get it in there because you actually gotta take this out of the jig and flex it Get that popped in. I suppose if you really wanted to, you could fit this in place and then put the uh, three quarter tubes in after, but I don't know. I already had them tacked, so I've done it this way. So before you weld this one in, just do your diagonal measurements, make sure everything's still square. Tack this, and then it should stay square. And the other two pieces you're putting in, you'll be able to stick it in here and just roll it in place or shove it in place so that's not too bad yeah the stuff is pretty resilient tubing you can bend it around and move it to get stuff in place and you're not going to hurt it as long as you don't do anything stupid 
So yeah, I'll measure everything up now, make sure this is dead square as I can get it, and tack it in place, check it again, and do a little bit of welding. I'm not gonna find a weld it, but I'll get it uh, stuck in there pretty good anyway. All right, I'll be back. Well, there it is. That's the finished uh, top section, I guess you'd call it, wing attached section. With the uh, X brace modification added in, so backside's not welded, but it's only take it out and flip it over, and that'll be it for this. The wing attach fittings, all that goes on after. So I guess next thing to do will be finish welding that, and then I gotta get this a little lower. I made these stands a bit too high, even when I'm not at the top section. The bottom of the plane is like waist height to me so I'm gonna lower them down a little bit if I'm working on anything on the bottom it's probably gonna be laid on side anyway so I'm gonna get her down to a sensible height I might even lay it on the floor actually to jig up that top half because it is up fairly far I don't know what it is from the datum yeah it's another two feet from the datum line so gonna be up around there somewhere so, yeah if this is on the floor the top should be about here ish I guess that actually be a good height to work on so yeah I think that's it for this video I'm gonna cut it off here I'm gonna start trying to do more frequent shorter videos instead of really long ones so that covers making this, and the next video will be uh, lining it, setting it up, and tying it in. So, as always, like that video if you liked it, subscribe, and have a good one, everybody.